Hey there, thanks for tuning into my video today. I am Cami, creator of the blog Tidbits at tidbits-cami.com. I am excited to share another room reveal in our pole barn home, which is our split bathroom space that all of our four kids get to share from teenage girl to seven year old boy. <laughs> yes, just one bathroom for all of them. And if that sounds like a family disaster to you, well, it could be. Except we made possibly the smartest design decision for this house and created a split bathroom. If this is a new concept to you, let's chat about it and take a tour around our finished kids' bathroom. All right, so what is a split bathroom? Um, it is exactly what the name implies, where you split the bathroom with a door, typically, <laughs> to designate privacy and certain functions. There might be several ways to do this, but in our modern day, the most common is to just separate the toilet and maybe the shower and um, tub combo area from the bathroom vanity or like a getting ready area. For a master bathroom, where maybe just two people share, it is most common just to use or just to separate the toilet area and put that behind doors, maybe with a nice fan. <laughs> and if you have the room, I think that is a great idea and most definitely in my dream master bathroom layout that maybe I'll have someday. <laughs> but for the space we um, had here and considering the needs of our four kids, we split our bathroom so that the shower and tub combo was with the toilet and includes a small sink vanity area. And the other part of the bathroom has a lot of countertop space, one small sink and a giant mirror and loads of storage. This is basically the designated getting ready area. So whether it's night or morning, we can have someone in the shower or going to the bathroom and another one out here can still brush their teeth. Um, one might be doing their hair. Now this has worked out really well, especially considering there are four kids sharing this one bathroom. Also, fun fact, split bathrooms go way back to the Victorian era where indoor plumbing technology was just kind of added gradually, first starting with the ability to bath and wash in our homes and then later the porcelain thrones were created and usually added onto the house separate from the washrooms. Uh, just some fun design history for you that I recently learned and aren't we all just so grateful for indoor plumbing. <laughs> all right, hopefully that was some good food for thought, especially if you are building or remodeling. But for now, let's look at all the details in this split bath bathroom that we have designed. If you're dying to know where I got some of the things you might see in this space, I'll be sure to link to a bathroom shop page that I created for you and you can check out my blog post also that will have all those links and then maybe pin some images for your bathroom Pinterest idea boards. All right, starting with what we like to call the getting ready area. Let's look at what we've done. All right, you'll notice this big long vanity, but if you look close enough, you can tell it's actually two smaller vanities <laughs> placed together. I did this for a couple of reasons. One, by ordering two smaller vanities, like without countertops or sinks, we saved hundreds of dollars. So huge money saver already. But also it was impossible to find a longer vanity that didn't have two sinks. And a smaller vanity always comes with a countertop and sink if you buy that. So I actually only wanted one sink in this bathroom because I knew with three girls, we would need more countertop space because of curling irons, blow dryers, makeup, you name it. <laughs> if we did have two sinks, we'd have very little countertop space and less cabinet storage space. Also with the sink in the shower toilet area, three sinks would have just been overkill. So we bought the two vanity base units and did a DIY marble countertop so that only one side had the sink cut out. Um, and if you've been hanging out with me throughout this whole house build, you, or if you haven't been hanging with me, you might be thinking, how in the world did they DIY a marble countertop? Um, we have frequently bought marble remnant slabs and we just cut and hone them ourselves, which I have an entire video on. 
It is hard and hefty work, but this whole top of real Carrera marble only cost us about $100 and we were able to customize it and fit our needs exactly. So that was pretty awesome. Um, the marble cuts are a little imperfect since we don't have like massive marble manufacturing tools, but we've just learned to embrace the imperfections and rejoice in all the money we save. <laughs> so moving on, this vanity mirror was also a custom build that we framed out with a slim piece of walnut wood. I just recently shared the video tutorial on how we did that, if you wanna check that out. And we have some really pretty brass lighting in here that fills the space with light since it doesn't actually have any direct natural light, which honestly is the biggest downside of this space. Uh, I also had some fun mixing up the flooring a bit for each um, split bathroom space. In the getting ready area, I've used just square travertine tile with thick grout lines and that blends into small rectangle travertine tiles in the other bathroom space. And both of these tiles we bought from Floor & Decor. I actually wanted to turn the rectangle tiles the other direction and kind of stagger them like brick floors, but I forgot the hubs could not read my mind. <laughs> I didn't communicate that well with him. Uh, he laid down the floors that he thought was the obvious way um, before we actually moved in and I didn't see it until it was a done deal. So anyway, <laughs> lesson learned there. All right, if you saw my recent antique haul video, you've already seen this beautiful vintage wool rug that I picked up that just fits this space perfectly. I think it brings in some great contrast and that European farmhouse vibe that I'm trying really hard to create throughout this home. Now, on the walls, most of it is painted with a flat white paint. I used Benjamin Moore's Chantilly Lace. But along this far wall, we went pretty bold for me with this dark pewter paint color. I'll have to dig around for the exact name of the paint um, and, and I'll leave that in my blog post, but I thought I would regret this dark color in this small space, but I actually really love the contrast. It still feels like a bright space with a bit of that moodiness that is so popular these days. Um, we added some vertical trim pieces to look like planks here, and we painted all the trim and the wall treatments this darker color. Now, we don't store a lot of towels in this section of the bathroom, so I just put up one of my favorite antique finds, this cool wood piece with hangers and it holds a couple of these amazingly beautiful linen towels from Olive and Linen. Um, I am completely obsessed with their bath towels and I can't resist adding them to each bath space whenever I can. I'll add a link below to Olive and Linen if you are as obsessed with linens as I am. Uh, to me, they are just the piece de resistance of any space and I always kind of splurge on my linens. Um, as you might already know that I'm obsessed with by following my Tidbits linen shop. Uh, anyway, let's talk about this art. It is really a special piece to us. It was just an inexpensive digital print that I got from an online shop and I printed it locally. It was titled Joan and that's what caught my attention because we had just been studying Joan of Arc in our homeschool history lessons. Uh, my kids were very impressed with her courage and conviction and we like to imagine this is her contemplating cutting her hair and what an act of courage that meant for her going forward. I'd like to hope that my kids will often look at it while they're getting ready for the day and just remember her courage and see the beauty and strength within themselves. Anyway, moving on to the other split section in this bathroom. One of my favorite features is the open vanity with the brass base and the marble countertop. Now, this was bought as a complete piece and I just love to hang a towel on the brass bars here. I knew we didn't need a ton of storage and drawers in this area of the bathroom, so I was excited to use a more open vanity to kind of save on some visual space. The mirror is just an antique mirror I've had for years. It is a little worn and full of patina and I love it. <laughs> we hang a hand towel next to the vanity and here is a fun little tip for you. If your towel rod or hanger leaves your long towels um, like puddling on the van vanity countertop, which they so often do. Try tying it up sort of like a scarf and that helps most of it get off the vanity top. Um, it's cute and it keeps it from getting soaking wet. So I like these thinner linen towels or they're sometimes called Turkish towels from Olive and Linen. They dry really quick and they just look great in the bathroom. 
We have the same wall treatment in this room, but I used some cute shaker pegs where they can hang their towels. And I placed a baby picture of each kiddo above so they all know which towel is theirs. And it's just super sweet to look at. Uh, these waffle linen towels from Olive and Linen are so divine. They are the softest linen towels I have ever felt. <laughs> I love the fringe at the bottom and the kids say they are super absorbent. Just so, so pretty. And yes, I am an absolute towel snob, <laughs> but I also love how well they went with the shower curtain that I got for this space. Yeah, it's just all about the linens for me, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Anyway, above the toilet, we placed a little storage cabinet, which happened to be very close to the same color as the vanity cabinets in the other room. So it all flows really nicely together. Let's take a quick look at the tub and shower area. We opted for a really deep and wide soaker tub in here since we don't have a soaker tub in the master bathroom. So that is really nice to have when someone needs to just soak. Uh, this is a porcelain tile with a really pretty design and we were sure to put a window in here. Even if it's small, it's really nice to put, have just a little bit of natural light and that ability to get fresh air into the bathroom, which I think all bathrooms should have. The fixtures I've put in here are all just warm metal tones to tie into the vanity. Um, I've sprinkled in fun little details throughout that you might notice, but that is about all the details of this space. I hope you enjoyed the tour of our split bathroom for the kids. I would love to hear in the comments what you think of a split bathroom concept or maybe just tell me what your favorite features were from this bathroom tour. I really appreciate you watching and this is such a help for me to be able to continue creating these videos for you. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you do that. And if you want more tidbits, go ahead and watch the playlist that I'll link below to all the room reveals in our new home so far. And I will be back to share more inspiration for do-it-yourself living.